Hello everyone, thanks for being here. Today we're going to be talking about the Jackery 550 and how I use it for mobile DJing. Now I planned on dropping this video a long time ago, but honestly my event season just kind of got away from me. But now that things have slowed down for the winter, I figured this would be a perfect time to release this video. Also now I have a little bit more experience with the Jackery 550, so it seems like a perfect opportunity to do this. Jackery power stations have become really popular amongst the mobile DJ community. And if you're not familiar with what it is essentially it is a high capacity battery bank that can be used for an array of things from powering a small refrigerator to charging a drone cell phones or even some of your DJ gear now I stubbornly held off buying one even though a lot of people told me to grab one simply because it was quite an expensive investment. However, I had a client over the summer last year reach out wanting to book me. And when I asked more details about the event, they told me that their ceremony was gonna be on this mountain, pretty much in a field with no power. So in order for me to do this event, I obviously needed a good battery powered option. Now, my main ceremony rig is a Electrovoice 30M. Now, I do also own the Everse 8, and I'm gonna go over why I would choose maybe one over the other, meaning a battery powered speaker versus owning a Jackery, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So I ended up picking up a Jackery 550, and I got it for a great deal from Home Depot. It was on sale, so score with that. Some of you may remember a gig log that I did last summer where I was complaining about running a, I think it was a hundred foot power cord from the venue's power source to where I needed to put the ceremony speaker. It was like an 85 or 90 degree day with like 90% humidity and I was absolutely miserable. And I just, I remember thinking how much easier my life would have been that day if I had a battery powered option. Honestly, I feel if you don't have a solid battery powered option, you're doing yourself and your clients a huge disservice and here's why. Number one, having a battery powered option obviously is gonna cut back on carrying heavy power cords. It's also gonna cut down on trip hazards. And I don't know about you, but that's one of my biggest fears as a mobile DJ. And it actually impacts where I set up because I wanna eliminate as many trip hazards as possible. So this is gonna allow you to be more centrally located and in areas that make sense acoustically because you're not tied to a power source. And I think a lot of times DJs compromise speaker placement because they're tied to an inconvenient outlet that's far away, they didn't bring enough power cord, they're too lazy to run that power cord. So having this battery powered option ultimately is going to allow you to provide a better service ultimately is gonna make for a quicker setup um, because there's no wire management. It's also gonna make you power independent so you don't have to worry about dealing with sketchy power outlets or inconvenient power outlets. And honestly, it's also a great backup option if God forbid the power goes out so that the show can and will go on. It also allows uh, clients to have a little bit more freedom to celebrate where they want to. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot more events uh, in less convenient locations. So I think it's important for us to be flexible and accommodating. Um, and it's small enough to always have with you. It's not an inconvenient piece of gear. So I always have it in my vehicle, whether or not I think I need it, just because you never know. These are also great for ceremonies because they are completely silent, unlike gas power generators. Now, some gas power generators can be pretty quiet, but I don't think there's anything better than having a completely silent option, especially during intimate moments like somebody's wedding ceremony. Now, I don't wanna go too far off the deep end here, but I do wanna talk about some of the pros and cons and a little bit about the product. Now, to my understanding, Jackery offers one of the lightest weight options out there. Now, they don't use the newest battery technology, but they are extremely portable, especially for the amount of power that you're getting and they're very reliable. I'd consider it a mid-range power station. It does use a lithium ion battery and is rated for about 500 charge cycles. So that means from fully charged 
to depleting it and charging it again. You'll get about 500 of those before you start seeing uh, the battery potential decrease. Now a downside with these is you cannot replace the battery. So once the battery cells have degraded to a point where this really isn't useful anymore, uh, you are gonna have to purchase another unit. So I'm gonna consider that con number one, the fact that it doesn't have a replaceable battery. The other thing I wish it had was an estimated time remaining. Right now, it gives you a battery percentage such as 87%, 57% battery left, but I wish that was converted to usage hours such as three hours remaining, two hours remaining based on the draw that it's seeing. Another thing is the handle. Might be a little nitpicky, but I wish the handle folded down because then it would take even less space in the car and really streamline the unit. It is really portable, but it would be so much better if it had one of those handles that folded down like on a, like a little lunch cooler. Just something to consider in the future. The other thing that I wish mine had was an additional AC plug. My particular model, the 550, only has one. So I'm actually using a, um, adapter to add additional plugs. Now, I don't know if this is a bad thing. So far it's been okay, but I do wish I had an additional AC plug to use. So now let's talk about the pros. A lot longer list than the cons. So the most important thing is the fact that this is a pure sine wave energy source. Now I don't have time to get into all that right now. Just know that it is clean energy and safe for sensitive electronics. It has a nice consistent power source. There's no gas and no maintenance, which is awesome. Now, there might be some situations where you may need a gas power generator simply because it has limitless power potential as long as you keep feeding it fuel. But for most general DJ applications, a ceremony with pre-ceremony music might be an hour, hour and a half, two hours if something's running late, it can handle this no problem. Uh, most of the Jackeries can handle basic DJ needs. So again, it is lightweight, it's easy to use, and it has really flexible charging. You can charge this via solar, DC, or AC, and it takes around seven to eight hours. Now, that could be a con, because that is a, a pretty decent amount of time to get this charged up back to full capacity, but, you can leave this plugged in without overcharging it, which in my opinion is a bonus. It is equipped with something called, I think like a battery management system, and essentially it prevents damage from leaving it on charge. I also have a little hack. Um, I'm not gonna say the name because they're all gonna activate in my house, but the Amazon You Know Who has these power plugs where you can plug in devices and then have it controlled through an app. So what I do is I have all of my Ape Labs on a schedule. So every Wednesday from, I don't know, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., my lights will charge and they do it automatically. So by the time I get to the weekend, my lights are already fully charged and I don't even have to worry about it. And this might also be a cool thing to use with the Jackery so you don't always have to leave it charging. Maybe put it on a schedule with uh, one of those Wi-Fi enable uh, Amazon you know who plugs. Being on the topic of maintenance, let's now have a quick chat about charging these and using them in extreme temperatures and how to get the most life out of your Jackery. So in general, batteries should be stored in a climate controlled environment. Batteries don't like really hot or really cold. Now specifically with cold, it's very hard on batteries when charging and it can actually damage the battery by reducing its lifespan. Essentially what's going on on the inside is a chemical reaction. And by charging this in a too cold of an environment, the chemical metabolism is going to be permanently reduced and ultimately is gonna affect the battery's capacity. So the more you do this, the further it's gonna reduce the capacity each time. So it's really important to make sure that you're not charging your batteries in super cold temperatures. The saying goes, if you're cold, they're cold. You know, with pets, bring them in. Well, the same thing goes for your lithium ion batteries. So it's recommended to keep the uh, recharging temperature between 32 degrees Fahrenheit and no more than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. 
the safe uh, operating temperature, so meaning, you know, obviously as mobile DJs, we're gonna be outside, is really between 14 degrees and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I'm not really worried about the cold end of using this in the cold because I don't know too many of us who are outside DJ, mobile DJing in a 14 degree weather, unless you're Ben Stone in Minnesota, then it's totally plausible. But uh, the 104 degrees absolutely could be a concern, especially if you're out there for hours in direct sunlight. So always be mindful of this. Try to put it in a shady spot if possible and keep it from baking in direct sunlight. On a side note, uh, when charging this, I noticed that it charged pretty quickly up until about 98% and then it was stuck on 98% forever. And I'm like, what is going on? It's gonna to begin to trickle charge and this is also to prevent it from overheating because when uh, lithium ion batteries charge, they can get pretty warm. So let's get to the reason why you're probably all here and that is the testing of the Jackery 550. So my first test was with the Electrovoice 30M because once again, that is my main ceremony and cocktail hour speaker and I wanted to see what my max runtime would be. So what I did was played standard ceremony cocktail hour music, you know, your vitamin string quartet, your Boyce Avenue, things like that. I then turned the Evolve 30M up to max volume right below peak. So meaning the limit light came on, I just dialed it back one notch and then saw how long it could play music at max volume. Now, obviously I would never play it this loud uh, at a ceremony or cocktail hour, but by having the max amount of draw from the jack I could see what the absolute um, shortest amount of playtime would be. My other plan was to actually um, strategically record in 10 minute increments how much the battery was decreasing. And then I was like, I ain't got time for this. Honestly, after a few hours, I got sick of doing it and I just ended the test when the Jackery finally got to 15%. Uh, to my understanding, it's not great to let these go uh, completely dead to zero. So let's check out my first test with the 30M. standing at the property line that's my neighbor's house the 30m is in that room right there and I can still hear it down here by the property line so when I tell you I have this thing cranked I'm telling you I have this thing cranked so I hope everybody likes listening to uh, soft piano instrumentals on a late Saturday morning because uh, this is what's going on at the Lynch house <laughs> What's the problem? I'm bored. <laughs> what? Do you like the music? I do, but I've been listening to it since 9 o'clock. It is 20 after 12 now. <laughs> you said it was only going to last two I hours. I didn't know how long it was going to last. Well, it's... I'm bored. <laughs> gave up on my 10 minute time checks. <laughs> I had no idea it was gonna take this long. I literally took a shower, started to get ready um, so I could do things later. We are at like six hours of this music and it's kind of torture. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with it. Oh God, this is such a long test. I feel like jumping into a burning ring of fire. <laughs> Seven hours. <laughs> it's almost seven hours that I've been listening to that. 
We're gonna turn, I gotta do the test all over again. Oh no, you don't. But we're gonna turn up. We're gonna be listening to. Okay, like, goodbye. So I am back for round two of testing, now using the Evolve 50. Same thing applies, I am one click below the limit. I have everything zeroed out. I do think I am running this on club though, which is how I would normally be running my Evolve 50s for a normal reception or something like that. So I have this thing absolutely cranking in the basement. I wanted to give my neighbors a little reprieve from the other day and my basement is pretty much all solid concrete walls so the rest of the house is obviously like getting annihilated by this thing but I walked around the outside and honestly it's really not bad at all so I am banging to see how long I can run an Evol 50 on the Jackery 550. Right now I'm at about four and a half hours let me check on the Zachary. We're at 49%. We've still got a lot of turn up in Club Basement, baby. I this song. I'm gonna turn on some of the lights here. Check this out. Wait till the bass kicks in. I'm assuming the speaker's like right around here. Believe it or not though, the concrete walls are doing a great job on the outside. So my speaker is in the basement through that window. So for how loud that Evolve 50 is and me rocking the crap out of my house, it's really not that bad. Now what I'm about to show you in this video, I do not recommend, but I just wanted to see if it could. So what I did was I actually connected two Evol 50s. So I literally had my full DJ console as well as two speakers and I wanted to see if it could run it and for how long it could run it. So let's check that out. Clearly in the last test, I was asking way too much of the 550. I just wanted to see what its absolute limit was. If I were to ever consider the Jackery for a battery backup for my main system, I would 110% go with something like the 1000 or the 1500. The 550 just doesn't give me enough headroom to be able to really push the system. Now the power consumption of an Evolve 50 is between 100 and 240 volts AC. So obviously, depending on how hard you push the speaker would determine whether or not if the 550 could handle it. This is why once I crossed that very fine threshold, it would turn off. Or if a song had a bass line that just hit a little too hard, it would turn off. So I was able to play these at a pretty decent part party volume for about three hours while running everything else. But once I asked just a little too much of it, it became a problem, which is why this would not be my first go-to for my current system with the size of the Jackery that I currently own. So I anticipate getting asked why I would choose something like a Jackery over a battery powered speaker, or maybe a battery powered speaker, over a Jackery. So it really boils down to what do you need and what are you trying to do with it? Now, Electro Voice knocked the Everse 8 out of the park and I actually did a whole entire review on it. So be sure to check that out if you're not familiar with that speaker, but it's one of the best battery powered options on the market. But truth be told, not all speakers are designed to do all jobs. And obviously a small eight inch battery power top has its limits and you might need additional output from something like an Evolve 30 or an Evolve 50. So the Jackery gives you the freedom and flexibility to use a larger speaker if needed. At the same time, you might not need something as large as an Evolve 30M or an Evolve 50. And you could significantly reduce uh, your weight by using something like 
the Everse 8 instead of a Jackery and one of those larger tops. The Everse 8 weighs 16 pounds, where I believe the 30M is around 40 pounds. So that is a significant weight difference. So if you can use a smaller speaker, the Everse is a great choice. If you need something a little bigger, the Evolve 30M is a great choice. So it's really up to you and again, right tool for the right job. Now, an advantage of using something like the Everse is the fact that it has swappable batteries. So you can actually buy multiple batteries for that unit, have them charged, and if you need a longer battery life than what the one battery gives you, you can just simply pull out the battery and shove another one in and you're back up and running in a matter of seconds versus something like the Jackery. Once it's dead, you need about seven to eight hours to charge that unless you're planning on using a solar panel. Again, we could go kind of crazy with this, but the point is, is the Everse 8 can immediately swap out batteries where the Jackery does not have that capability. So I think there's space for both of these. I own both, I use both. There's reasons why I choose one over the other in certain situations. Personally, I think the more options and tools we have in our bag of tricks, the better we can be as mobile DJs. I know this was a long one, so thank you for sticking with me and checking out this video on the Jackery 550 and how I incorporated it into my mobile DJ setup. I hope our discussion today helps you decide whether something like the Jackery would be beneficial to you or something more along the lines of a battery powered speaker like the Everse 8 or heck, maybe even both. As always, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Happy mixing DJs. Thank you.